hey, let's talk about the five dysfunctions of a CEO. Maybe you recognize some of these, maybe you fall into some of these traps, maybe you don't, but I would love your feedback to know if this sounds like this is you or a CEO you've come across. So dysfunction number one, they are trapped in a subject or discipline area. So maybe they have come from finance or product and they are stuck in that way of thinking. They treat every problem like it's a finance problem, every problem like it's a, um, a product or tech problem. The reality is CEOs need to be leaders, not subject matter experts. You need to let go of that subject matter expertise to really truly elevate yourself into leadership. What got you in that chair is not going to keep you there. You need to jettison a lot of the thinking and being a subject matter expert to be truly a great leader because product thinking can't solve everything. Finance thinking can't solve everything. You need to understand and know enough about the disciplines across your business, but disciplines are only part of the problem. The reality is leadership is a human challenge because all, biz all business challenges are human challenges at the end of the day. You need to let go of your subject matter excellence. Dysfunction two, you're a bulldozer. You have got a strong will. You are great at convincing about your way of doing things, your idea, your strategy. You push things through. Your sheer force of energy is truly amazing and exceptional. It gets you through. It gets things done. Now, that, again, may have got you into that chair. But the reality is, is that's not sustainable for you or for the business. There is only one of you. You may well have been able to do that in a particular area you've come from in a different part of the business, or maybe you're a founder whose business is growing. You can't do that longer term. Being a bulldozer and being that one person in the room who's driving the energy and the, everything forward is exhausting. It leads to burnout from you and it leads resentment in others, right? We try and hire senior, experienced, great people. They don't want to be bulldozers and they really shouldn't. They'll have a diversity of views and experience that you need to hear. You can no longer be that bulldozer because it's not good for you and it's not good for the business. You have permission to turn that off. There are other alternatives to lead. If you're not sure what that might mean, we can have a conversation. But the bulldozer is only one tool in your tool belt. It doesn't have to be everything. Okay, dysfunction number three. This is looking and focusing overly on lagging indicators of success. So let's talk about them. These are things like sales, um, turnover, profit, conversion. These are all lagging indicators of success. Ultimately, you have no control over these. You don't. You might like to think that you do. What you do have control over, however, are things further upstream, okay? How many sales calls are your sales team doing? How many visits are they? How is your marketing working? You have control over elements that are upstream. You can make those things happen, but you can't control the results. You can't control sales. You can only control things upstream or create the conditions for success in a very, very different place. And if you're overly fixated on the numbers, you can't see what's going wrong somewhere else further upstream in your business. Look upstream for what is going wrong rather than focusing purely on the results. I mean, of course, it's important to measure these results. Purely focusing on them as KPIs is not going to lead to success. OK, it relates back to being a bulldozer in part two. Bulldozers look at this stuff and do it that way. The reality is you need to look further upstream to see actually what's really going on. Number four, this is looking at and focusing only on the surface level conversations. So when you're sat with your lead, senior leadership team or your, one of your C-suite team comes to you with a particular challenge, the reality is, is what you're talking about is not the real challenge that's going on right now. What do I mean by that? Well, I alluded to it or I talked about it in the last one about looking upstream. But the reality is, is when you're having a conversation, you're witnessing conversations in terms of either your board of directors, your senior leadership team, is for you to understand really what's going on in this conversation. And that's to look beyond the surface level detail of what's being discussed, to look underneath to see what the motivators are of the human beings having that conversation, right? How are they feeling? Where are they coming from? Are they scared? Are they nervous? Are they angry? What emotions are on show here? How are people responding? Who's speaking? Who isn't speaking? You need to look at the dynamics of the conversation to truly understand what's happening in a room, not focusing on a surface level problem that's presented to you. You often see this in terms of people spending a lot of time talking about strategy. I mean, the reality is it's not the strategy, the problem, it's the implementation of that strategy. You need to really understand what's going on below the surface of your conversations of your C-suite team and your organization generally to really know what's happening. 
Don't settle for just the surface level. Okay. And five, and arguably the most important dysfunction of all, is not making the hard but important people choices. Now, it's easy enough. Certainly, again, if you think about your C-suite or your board of directors, there are people, if people are a three out of 10, they're only performing as a three out of 10 on that board or in that C-suite, it's easy enough to know what to do about those people, right? They haven't got a place in the organization anymore. It's time for them to go. You know what you have to do. And equally, if there are 10 out of 10, right, you can appreciate what makes them great. The real challenge you have is all those bits in between. And the reality of that is the folks who are a seven out of 10, those are the hardest people to deal with because they're not awful, but they're not exceptional. Maybe they're just doing enough to get by. Maybe they have moments of greatness every now and again, interdispersed with long periods of just being average at what they do. Those are the harder people to know what to deal with, right? And it's very easy to think, oh, you know, they'll get better or we can put them on an improvement panel or coach them. We'll do something to get them to be better at what they do. But underneath it, you, your instinct is telling you that they're not the person who needs to be in that seat right now, okay? If your instinct is telling you that, then it's almost certainly true. And you can spend time and effort trying to improve that person. And maybe that would work for them. Maybe that would work for you. But the reality is it's probably not. And the biggest challenge and dysfunction that I see is CEOs not doing anything about the folks who are a seven out of 10. These people who sit in their job for year after year, just doing okay, but never doing things in an exceptional way. If you're at the C-suite or sat on a board of directors, there is no space for the seven out of tens in any way, shape or form in leadership in any organization. You know what you have to do. Your instinct is telling you the right thing to do. You need to act upon that. And again, the big dysfunction is just not doing that. Maybe you've spotted something in there that you have got a handle on. I'd love to know what it is that you've got a handle on and what advice you could give to other CEOs. Maybe there's something in there that you've spotted that you think, man, maybe I should try and address that. You know, drop me a line, give me a call and we can talk about that. But I would love to hear some feedback from you on this video. Thanks again for your time. Bye-bye now.